StartupRad.io, your podcast and YouTube blog covering the German startup scene with news, interviews, and live events. Hello and welcome, everybody. This is Joe from StartupRad.io, your startup podcast and YouTube blog from Germany. This is as the audience on YouTube may already see, short sleeves, this is still a recording we did in July, but nonetheless, we will publish it in fall. But we did it for a very simple reason that I wanted to take some time off and we just had to edit everything before that. So nonetheless, I would like to welcome a startup from Austria, from the greater Vienna area, in the person of Daniel. Hey, how you doing? Hi, Joe. I'm very glad to be with you here. I'm fine and uh, really looking for a great interview now. Um, actually, you're doing some great advertisement for Austria as a vacation location. We just talked about it before we started this recording because behind you, it looks very beautiful. Um, but you are... Uh, one of the founders of a startup called Edupression. We'll soon get to this, but first, uh, let's talk a little bit about you and what you've been doing in the past. I've been looking at your LinkedIn profile, and of course, everybody who'd like to reach out to you directly, they can go down here in the show notes, and there we will have your LinkedIn profile. Um, and I've seen you did a lot of um, diff you've been working a lot of different positions in insurance companies. How did this happen and how did you get from being a project lead in a globally leading insurance company to a startup entrepreneur? How did this happen? Can you tell us, take us along the journey? Yes, of course. It was really a, a great journey. Yeah, I was actually, I was born uh, in Dombien, that's uh, near the Lake of Constance in Vorarlberg in Austria. And uh, then I studied in Vienna and um, did, uh, did some law studies, uh, went also to England to have some law studies. So I'm actually uh, from the background, a lawyer. And um, I started then in a bank, from a bank, I went to an insurance company, to Allianz Austria, went to Allianz Switzerland, to Allianz Germany, SE in Munich. And then uh, finally, I went uh, to Unica as head of uh, claims and uh, stayed there for around about 10 years. Um, then uh, one, of my, one of my friends committed suicide. And in, 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 that, uh, in that case, then I really uh, came into contact with Professor Pizzavas. Professor Pizzavas is uh, our, uh, you would call him uh, um, our brain, yeah, our brain in regard of depression his professor maybe a medical advisor exactly medical advisor yeah i think that's the right word here um and um and and he actually um told me a lot about uh, depression and the problems patients are facing this depression actually yeah that uh, patients don't really find um, the right treatment options uh, that it's a kind of channel they actually are in you know, there are so many different groups who are doing treatment for depression. Just think about the general practitioner, think about the psychiatrist, think about the neurologist, uh, think about uh, psychologists, think about psychotherapists. So that's really very difficult for them. So who actually is my first contact here? And then the second question is, when you don't make uh, drug therapy, then the second question is, yeah, what kind of uh, psychotherapy you actually would make or you would, uh, you would perform? So um, these are really very, very, very big questions. And then the second point, yeah, when you, when you just see uh, how patients are actually um, facing problems, yeah, when, 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 when they are confronted with this 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 uh, depression problem, yeah. Then uh, then uh, they, they they don't know uh, they don't know, yeah. When when actually they they are really they are really back again when they are recovered, yeah. So many people, many patients only receive some kind of treatment which is not enough, and then they fall back again. And uh, you know when you have actually um, the first depressive episode, 
you have a 50% uh, probability that you will get another depressive episode. And when you had the second depressive episode, you actually have a probability to get uh, another depressive episode with 70%, and that's going up to 90%. And then um, it's really a long-term treatment you need. So there are really a lot of different issues uh, patients are facing. And from that state is actually, um, yeah, we said and we decided yeah, to, to, to start with our startup, yeah, to, to change that, yeah, to make a real difference yeah, in the treatment of depressive patients. Um, I always wanted actually and always had uh, in mind yeah, to, to, start, uh, to, to go on with a startup. And uh, so we really decided to do that. Yeah? We found another two others, yeah, two friends of mine, yeah, and so we started together. We are now four in the company, yeah, four founders at the end of the day, and um, and really working since around about uh, three years on the project. Mm -hmm. I see. Um, can you tell us first a little bit how a depression usually evolves? Because first, I think many people have a problem to really differentiate if they're just down, if they're just exhausted, or if they're really in depression. Disclaimer, what you hear here in this interview is just a hint. It's no medical advice. And then secondly, how actually a depression is, let's say, playing out, turning out, because you talked about uh, depressional phases. Um, how, uh, is it that you're down all the time or that you have some highs and some lows. How does this usually look like? Well, well, Joe. First of all, depression can uh, can look quite dif different. Yeah. So uh, you know, there are some 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 uh, children having depressions. There are some elderly having depressions, and this will, of course, look a little bit different yeah, from from the overall picture. But in general, what you can say, it's about concentration problems you are facing very often. It's about uh, that you are tired. So in the German speaking world, we are also talking about burnout. So that means that you just uh, can't, can't really go on with your daily life. You don't feel that you can go on. You feel a kind of uh, fatigue. Um, what, what we use to, to measure depression is actually the PHQ-9. The PHQ-9 is a measurement of nine questions, which helps you to evaluate whether you have a depression. So this score is starting from zero to 27. And when you have from zero to under five, that is more or less, uh, you have some depressive uh, symptoms, but you are not really having a real depression. But when you're scoring above five, you really have a depression and you should seek advice, first of all, with a general practitioner, because you have to uh, see whether there are some physical problems you might have. Um, so this is the first step you have to do. And then you can go on uh, with the therapy. The doctor actually um, um, tells you how which one would fit best to you. That can be a medical treatment with drugs or could be a psychotherapy or a combination of that. And here exactly a depression is also coming in. So uh, a depression is a, is, is a certified medical product as a monotherapy. That means that you can use uh, a depression for mild to moderate depression uh, symptoms uh, all over alone as a standalone therapy, or you can also combine it with a drug treatment or with a psychotherapy uh, particular treatment. Both is actually fine. Um, how, so let's say I'm filling out this PHQ-9 questionnaire, which you can, by the way, find down here in the link in the show notes. Um, and what are, what would be my next steps that I download a depression that I seek medical advice? What would be like the next steps? It's very easy. We are actually helping our patients here for the next steps. So what you would do, you're downloading a depression as an app or you just use it over your browser. Both is perfectly fine. Then you have a free trial phase where you just can experiment a little bit. Yeah. So you will see videos, you will see interviews, you will see some other posts, uh, posts. Just think about social media 
Um, it's an activity feed where you really get individualized uh, posts uh, for yourself. Um, and then after this free trial, uh, you are actually open yeah, to go on. And when you go on, one of the first posts of that will be the information that you should first of all go to a general practitioner, uh, take some um, some blood uh, samples of, of yourself and uh, then see whether you have a physical illness maybe and not a mental illness. Just this is the first uh, decision actually which has to be taken uh, before you then really should go on uh, further with, uh, with uh, anti-drug therapy so, uh, or a psychotherapy. Uh, of course, most most uh, patients are suffering indeed from a depression uh, because when you just see uh, how many people per year are suffering from depression, this is um, per year around about 8% of the whole population, which is in the dark areas in Germany, Austria and Switzerland, around about 8 million people. And from these 8 million people, around about 5 million people are seeking really help with doctors. So uh, this is really uh, a lot of people yeah, suffering from this illness. But it's the same in the US and in Canada. Yeah? It's also the same actually in developing countries. Uh, it's always around about seven to eight percent of them were suffering from depression once a year. Mm -hmm. that, that's quite a high number. Um, and basically, um, you you help them in the first step to get connected to a medical professional. And my understanding is that the first thing is that you take them blood samples just to make sure uh, that you don't have a hormonal disorder, which you can uh, just correct with some shots or if it's really a medical depression. And how does your tool then come in to help within the process. Um, one question, because we, we had like this, you guys are one of the apps you can get on prescription. Uh, well, we, Joe, we, we are working on that. Yeah, You, you will get us on prescription uh, from the beginning of January, hopefully. So we are doing a digger application. Uh, we, we're talking January 2022, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So starting January uh, 20, uh, January 2022. So, so that's these are our plans actually, and um, well, we, we think we will achieve that. Yeah, our whole medical team is working on that, and uh, we are doing the clinical studies right now with the Medical University of Vienna. So uh, that really should work out fine. Well, and then when when you when you registered with that oppression, and when you get it then um, uh, for free, yeah, by by your insurance company. Uh, then just go on with that oppression. I think that's perfectly fine. Um, we are doing uh, the whole personalization for you in the background. That means that you are filling in, for example, we just mentioned PHQ-9, we have our medical mood chart, we have a Stroop test, we have uh, NBEC tests, which are measuring concentration problems, for example. And out of these data, we are actually, actually profiling the patients, yeah? And on this profile, we are then really playing out posts which might help you. That could be, for example, when you're doing the medical mood chart, you know, we have all the substances you right now have for antidepressants in the background. And when we know, for example, you're getting a lithium, then we will give you some information about this substance, about this medicine you're taking. And uh, this, of course, helps enormously. Yeah. You have to say depression. It's a little. It, it, it's a little bit like when when when, when you have uh, problems with your with your with your sugar. Yeah. So uh, then uh, you also have to learn how to give injections, uh, how to deal with certain things, what to eat. And with depression, it's actually the same. You have to know what positive activities mean for you. You have to know which activities you should avoid. You should avoid, for example, um, alcohol, yeah, which is uh, normally not very good for patients suffering from depression. Yet they are taking very often alcohol, yeah, because it's a kind of substitute instead of going to a doctor and getting some antidepressants. Um, yeah, and positive activities, sports, yeah, team sports, that would be something great, yeah. And we are showing this to the patients and also telling him and how to see and find connections 
of behavior and its depression. And also, for example, a uh, connection to also self-help groups to um, supplement the professional aid? Um, well, we don't, we, we don't show links to self-help groups, for example. Yeah? Uh, what we are doing is that we are having a list of depression specialists on our platform where the patient can link to, but the patient is also able to invite his own depression specialist. Maybe just something for the word depression specialist. Yeah? We are branding this word because we are thinking um, it, there are so many groups yeah, treating depression, as I mentioned before. So the doctors, the psychotherapists, the psychologists, that we try really to, to, uh, to be very open here. So they can invite their depression specialist, their doctor, their psychologist, their, uh, their psych psychiatrist, and then work on, on, uh, on, on the treatment together. And the great thing, yeah, you have on our platform, normally, you know, depression is really a black box. Uh, so you, you can tell to someone how you feel, how it's working, uh, what you can't do. Um, but uh, with our help, with our platform, you are actually able to see how you're feeling. You are able to see how you're progressing. And that's the big difference. Yeah. So we are taking really uh, what you normally have in all parts of medicine, Yeah. that you're Having a look on on blood uh, me measures that you that you were doing uh, doing some kind of um, of of uh, um, of of, of uh, um, you're looking uh, with with magnet resonance or with with uh, with, with MRT with other M MRT signs. Uh, you 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 are actually looking into into the patient, yeah, and in uh, in, in depression. This is just not common, yeah. So it's it's uh, it's a lot about only feelings. It's a lot about talking, but not real measurements. And that's something we are really changing. So that's a real fundament. A new one: patients and depression specialists can talk together and see how they are progressing. And is that uh, the piece we cooperating with the University of Vienna? Yes, we, we are cooperating with the University of Vienna actually in a lot of fields. Yeah. So um, at the end of the day for depression, you always have two, two parts. Yeah. The one is the treatment part and the other part is the, is the diagnostic part, right? And for the treatment part, we developed the self-help program. Yeah? The self-help program has elements of behavior therapy, uh, psychoeducation, and it's really extremely effective. It's effective as face-to-face -face therapy at the end of the day. On the other side, the diagnostics, you know, we, we, I just mentioned the different tests. We have the PHQ-9, the medical mood charts, troop and NBAC. But this will be only the first step. We are going into direction of uh, so-called digital phenotyping. Digital phenotyping means that everyone, you and me, Joe, we, we both have a kind of digital phenotype. You know, we are using, we are using the smartphones each day, And uh, there are so many data there, so voice data, how, how you are actually typing in things, how fast are you typing, uh, how many interactions do you have, and so on. And um, on this basis, you are able to have a digital phenotype. And this digital phenotype actually gives you an indication whether a new depressive episode will be in the near future. And that's our, let's say, mid to long term talk. Yeah, to have no, let's say, forms you have to fill out, but the patient only has our app on the mobile, and from this mobile data, we are able to predict whether the patient is going to have a new depressive episode in the near future. Uh, so that's then really cool, and that's a real game changer for mental health, because uh, right now you don't have all these possibilities Now it's a black box for most people, and that's what we are changing step by step. First step is really now, yeah, that we are having these different testing systems, and then going into digital phenotyping. Mm -hmm. um, basically, the idea is that you just have to uh, type like one paragraph of text, and you can make a forecast with some certainty. Would would that be the goal? And how far are you down the road? Well, 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 not really, not really. Yeah? It's going much deeper. 
for example, for example, what we're building algorithms and already built some algorithms. Yeah, that's uh, let's let's take a very nice example. Yeah, what we already built. Yeah, when you when we have the GPS data, we for example can uh, can uh, predict on the basis of GPS data whether someone is going uh, to have uh, some changes in life. Yeah, that uh, uh, that might affect uh, depression. Uh, so, for example, yeah, when you're walking over a lot of green spaces, yeah, parks, or uh, you're going just for some nice walks uh, out outdoor to the green, then this will affect uh, your depress depression if you're depressive, or it will prevent maybe that you get a new depression. But what we have right now is an algorithm, yeah, based on GPS data. And that's going on basing an algorithm else on voice, basing alg algorithms on, on other measurable data you get from the smartphone, and then putting that together into this digital profile. And out from this profile, we want to predict then whether a patient will get a new depressive episode. Actually, actually, um, it, this is not really 100% new, yeah? It's, uh, so, so some are working on that uh, for several years on that. The big problem here is that you need for a medical diagnos diagnosis around about 99.9% uh, probability that this is really the right diagnosis you are doing. Yeah? Uh, right now, I would say um, it might be 90% yeah? accuracy, but not more. And that's the problem. And we don't actually see that you will gain this, uh, this, uh, the rest of this nearly 10% accuracy in the next one or two years. So it's really mid to long term. I would say, um, it would take five to 10 years at least, yeah, to get this really done. But then it will be an absolute game changer in the medical, uh, depression treatment. Mm -hmm. Um, and, As we said, you guys are working uh, in some of the parts together with the medical school, uh, University of Vienna. Uh, I just looked it up before before the interview, and I just wanted to, not to go my work to waste. Um, this is one of the oldest universities in Europe. It's associated with 21 Nobel Prize winners, and it was founded 1356 for the Americans. That's more than 250 years before the first settlement in Jamestown. Um, and now that we have this piece of trivia out of the way, um, I was wondering, uh, what are the plans of you guys right now? You you'll be available on prescription in Europe, in Germany, in Austria, beginning of 2022. Uh, What are the next steps you guys are doing and how you currently finance and how will you finance your expansion? Yeah, thanks, Joe. That, that, that's a really, really good question. Yeah. Uh, well, we, 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 we built our, our platform and our two medical certified products in, in, in two languages. So it's German and it's also um, English. And as we have really these two, two languages, we also would like to expand, of course, in the, into the US. Yeah. I think that's really, that would be really a great opportunity. Yeah. We, we are planning uh, to do that, uh, by the end of next year. So 22, um, for that expansion, we are still, uh, looking for investors. We're looking for a series A actually. Um, and, uh, for Germany, we are looking for cooperation partners. That means, uh, you know, when we are doing uh, the, this uh, this app on prescription, uh, we actually need a really a good, a great sales force uh, who is which is approaching the doctors, yeah. So directly, just think about um, normal medicines, yeah. Uh, so you have the farmer, the farmer guys going to the doctor and telling them, uh, please. Uh, have a look at this antidepressant. It's better than this one, and so on. Yeah, and that's exactly what we are looking for: a cooperation in Germany, so in the German-speaking world. Yeah, in in in, in regard of sales, and uh, for the US, of course, also co uh, also some kind of uh, uh, cooperations, but also some investments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you already hinted. You guys are looking at. Um at uh at a series a this year next year something like this 
Well, we are look we are looking right now, and uh, we, we are talking with some investors about it. Yeah, and uh, we we would like to start the new year with some new investments. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so end of this year, beginning of 2022, everybody who'd like to learn more, they can go down here in the show notes and, um, well, we, we set the goal. So basically you guys are in an early stage. You have great cooperation partners and you are looking, uh, to expand in the US end of 2022. Um, guys, as we do in Germany, we don't cross fingers. We press thumbs. So thumbs press for you and Best of luck. It was a pleasure having you as a guest here. Joe, thank you very much. It was a pleasure being with you here and uh, have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That's all, folks. Find more news, streams, events, and interviews at www.startuprad.io. Remember, sharing is caring.